Hello to guys, Ara here and welcome back to a brand new video today and welcome to my reaction to the 2020 Racing Point car, the brand new Challenger here piloted by Sergio Perez and Lance Stroll for this 2020 season and they finally unveiled their actual car. They did unveil their livery a few days earlier on Monday along with Williams uh, earlier in the week but their actual car only got to unveiled at actual testing which started today, this morning here on Wednesday. Reduced testing from last year, two days less so then you have a three days Wednesday to Friday here but uh, straight away, you'll see uh, it looks very similar, very, very similar to the Mercedes car of last year. The entire front end even has been very inspired by that, and so pretty much I think Racing Point have been copying Mercedes' homework and have just changed the colours around a little bit, to be honest. We're going to look into that and delve into the technical side of things, but first and foremost, aesthetically, let me know what you guys think of the actual livery itself and the general look. I mean, I like the look of it. I mean, it looks like the Mercedes car last year, which was a pretty decent looking shaped chassis and whatnot, so the car actually looks a lot better than the Racing Point chassis and bodywork ever did last year, in my opinion. I never really liked the way their nose ever was, really, with the nostrils or even the solution they had last year without the nostrils. I think this one suits their car, especially with the Racing Point logo, a lot better at the front. But the actual livery itself, um, I said it on Twitter when it came out on Monday. It's a bit odd. I can't tell why I like it or not. I like the more pink on the front end. I, 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 I rate that. They've gone more, more to that aspect. I never liked the kind of blodge work that looked like a drumstick suite on the front with splodges of pink on white but I really don't gel well with the diagonal logo of BWT on the engine cover. I know what they're going for, obviously nice and big bold because BWT have become effectively the title sponsor of the Racing Point team, but and, and Alpha Tori have done a similar thing where they've got a massive logo over the cross, but the BWT diagonally just doesn't work for me, but let me know what you guys make of that, but let's now delve into the technical side of this car and show you exactly what has been maybe mimicked from Mercedes and the kind of uh, Mercedes uh, copied homework, if you will, uh, on this year's car. So we're going to start off then at the very front of the car with the front wing shape itself, which, uh, which very much mimics what Mercedes had last year. Of course, Racing Point had a uh, kind of half house solution last year if you're talking about extremes of Mercedes Red Bull v Ferrari last year uh, Racing Point now mimicking what Mercedes kind of had last year. It makes sense obviously with the philosophy change to the entire front end because you can see the nose and the kind of snow plow cape if you will off the back of the nose cone which is highlighted here in yellow which kind of goes backwards it's kind of hard to see with the shadow work there but very much you can see the way this nose tapers in and then it's got that kind of circular outward uh, nature to it is literally a copy of Merck. Like you put them some People have done photoshops on, on Twitter where they've made the color gray and it just looks like a Merc. It looks like the W10 uh, B-spec car, essentially. So uh, they've taken very much a big inspiration for that. Even the same way the chassis swoops inwards to make that thinner nose, obviously leave more air to flow on either side of the nose cone. So it's a change of philosophy. It's bold. I like it. I rate it because it is a bold strategy to change the philosophy completely because, of course, they never had anything like this. It is a big change from what they had last year. The same sort of thing with the kind of side pod arrangements the inlet themselves uh, not exactly a copy from Mercedes last year but it's uh, definitely not what they had last year last year they had a much more higher and kind of thinned out more rectangular inlet uh, to the uh, architecture to the side pod whereas they've gone more for a kind of more flowing rounded edge and the crash structure is very similar to what uh, Merck had where it's not protruding outwards obviously you've seen a lot of teams now this year they have the crash structure built into a wing at the bottom of the inlet and coming out to the upright on the uh, end plate to the side pod, whereas uh, Racing Point have kept that inboard and kind of inside the actual inner workings of the top face here, and it connects in rather uh, onto this black part that connects onto the like, kind of whole upright wing that connects down to the lower part of the barge wards there. And the wing mirror is similar from last year, just obviously a uh, different way to kind of house them, a little bit uh, more wider to line them up with the rest of the architecture of that entire thing, but um it's uh, like, like I was saying before, it is bold to, to, to completely change, but obviously they're copying what was last year's championship winning car. So if, if they can hopefully make everything work, obviously they're obviously going to do all the testing uh, in the simulations and whatnot, and hopefully it works for them on track. It's obviously a great way to go about it, but also there's some sort of familiarity and safety net of kind of evolving what you had last year rather than going for a massive uh, revolution. Yeah, you know, we've seen sometimes it doesn't go right for you if you have a massive uh, revolution 
solution, a la kind of let's talk about McLaren back in 2013 when they thought their 2012 car had nowhere to go, so they completely changed it for 2013, and it was a bucking Bronco. So uh, we'll see, but right now it does look pretty decent, actually, lap time-wise. The, the racing one car, I think, is, uh, as I recall, this in P2, actually, behind Valtteri Bottas, only six hundredths away from him on the first half of day one of testing, so it can't be too that, that too bad, but obviously testing is testing. You can't really read too much into it at all, but nice detailing uh, crossing over from last year with the nostrils, but of course now lining up to uh, where they uh, where Mercedes had it last year on either side of the S duct. So the S duct when they have the little inlet, which is uh, just about there actually, didn't pick it out, pick it out, but uh, getting some air from the front end for the bottom uh, uh, height of the front end of the nose cone, injecting it over the top of the chassis. That injection uh, mixing the air at the top and allowing it to attach more so. And these uh, deflectors are pretty much just making sure the turbulent air on either side does not affect that, and also channeling some air uh, very nicely lined up with these new winglets that Racing Point have that they uh, did not have, uh, to my knowledge, at the end of last year at Abu Dhabi testing. And those uh, inlets just nicely curved downwards, you can see, just probably pushing some air directly towards the inlets and making sure that the, that entire kind of area gets enough air for the cooling, of course, and also perhaps uh, with a lower angle one, maybe just pushing it downwards more towards the undercut of the actual side pod to allow that flow to the rear end of the car. Speaking of the rear end of the car, the floor seems to have a bit more detailing compared to uh, Abu Dhabi with a few more slot gaps in there and some uprights as well, which you might see on some different angles here. Uh, and we look towards the back end of the car. Nice, juicy, big T-wing compared to uh, sometimes race point didn't really run a T-wing, actually, uh, depending on what the race was there. But a juicy T-wing on the uh, bottom there of the rear wing attached to the shark fin. And then another fine detail and copy of Mercedes. Mercedes uh, have this, and not a lot of teams actually run this, which is a serrated uh, kind of uh, edge of the vortex tip uh, tips on the end plate here. So you usually have a vortex uh, generated on the tip of tip vortices, as obviously they're called. Uh, but to kind of cut away and kind of manipulate the way they actually form and maybe try and have a bit more of an efficient way of taking uh, any terminal air away from the main plane of the rear wing and focusing that tip vortices with the way they want it to, to create efficiency in the rear wing. Mercedes have had this jagged edge for last year and looks like Racing Point now have taken inspiration. So Racing Point definitely taking um, a lot from Merck of last year, but um, obviously other teams have done that as well. Haas, obviously this year's Haas car looks very similar to last year's Ferrari. So I don't know, it might be a juicy battle between uh, Ferrari B and Mercedes B this year in the form of Racing Point and Haas this year. But uh, yeah, the Racing Point looking aggressive, looking mean and uh, looking a lot better in general, like I said, uh, with all these changes. Uh, and obviously they're hoping to make a bigger step forward with this backing of La uh, of Lawrence Stroll, the backing of potentially, you know, the the the, the whole rebranding to, uh, to Aston Martin next year. They're hoping to make, well, they'd be hoping to make big strides to actually, you know, bank on that kind of huge branding change, basically. We look onto the side of the car now, focusing on the barge wood area, the uh, kind of end plate area uh, on the side pods itself, and that in, in itself has also changed as well, with a few more detailings on the boomerang wing, and also the more kind of serrated edge uh, flap uh, on the upright there, very much mimicking what Mercedes have again. So, surprise, shock horror. And then here, just kind of focusing on the kind of line work, uh, how everything connects together. You can see the chunkier bit of this wing, so that's where the crash structure is housed, I'm assuming, and then connecting up to the winglet that goes over the top, and then that itself is doubly connected to the wing mirror uh, at the chassis point, and then this upright, which is also another little nice uh, vortex generator for them to try and mix that air as it goes downwards. And then here, nice detailing on the right-hand side of these uprights. They weren't, uh, didn't seem to be present at Abu Dhabi, but it could be wrong, but they've also got some more slots that definitely were new uh, to the car. And also, uh, something I subtly noticed as well is it's not a massive change, but the inlets on the top here of the roll hoop, the actual uh, the, the, the roll hoop inlet, has also, again, mimicked Mercedes a little bit. You know, they didn't have this forward slant. You can see it slightly slants forwards and just the general shape of it and the size, again, mimicking their kind of big brother. So, uh, yeah, racing point, I don't know. Um... It's obviously a great way to go about it. Obviously, it's worked for Haas in the past. Didn't exactly work last year for them, but it has worked before in 2017 uh, and before then. Um, so it's not a bad route to go for. And I guess, obviously, last year was a, a bit of a tough time for them. You know, Perez obviously said it was always going to be tough with them being saved before last year in 2018 and then into 2019 it was always going to be kind of just a get through the year and then their proper car they want to build a foundation on might become in 2020 and then of course with the massive regulation changes in 2021 uh, it might be a good indication of, what, of the way they've gone about it you know maybe saving resources by 
mimicking the Mercedes car this year and allowing more resources and allowing more ingenuity into the 2021 car potentially is the way they've gone about it, um, which would be quite sensible. Racing Point have always been a team which uh, they're always the most efficient bang for your buck team. So I guess, uh, you know, think about it, that's actually quite a clever way to go about it. And the same thing with the Halo as well. They've got a slight little small winglet on there, which I don't believe they actually had last year. Uh, but I might be wrong on that because I haven't actually looked at the Abu Dhabi photos uh, from 2019. But the Racing Point car, that is uh, the, the kind of analysis of it and the look uh, deeper into it. And you can very much see the similarities between uh, this car and last year's Merc. And even this year's Merc, to be fair, because this year's Merc's uh, an evolution of last year. So perhaps in that kind of way, Racing Point might be able to look at what Merc are doing this year and seeing where they need to almost get to with upgrades as they go on through this season. But that doesn't mean, of course, Racing Point can be right up there because, of course, all the top teams are going to make an even bigger step forward, you would imagine there. But this would be quite interesting to see if where Racing Point Point put, uh, put put themselves with this car. The way it's looking, I don't know. You know, we've like I said, if it's going to be the same success story as Haas in 2017, you might imagine Racing Point are actually might be able to leap themselves right back into the fight with McLaren and Renault, which obviously would be a massive headache for, especially Renault. I think who, uh, it's going to be a bigger headache for because I believe McLaren might be a bit more confident of staying there where they were with that solid P4. Whereas Renault, they were quite shaky last year. Of course, they've got quite a different car this year, but I think they may be looking behind them a little bit at Racing point trying to catch up there but that's the video then on the racing point 2020 car we'll be having the videos on alfa romeo and renault coming up later today so if you're already around here do get subscribed for that if you did enjoy the video and find it informative then be sure to hit that like button let me know what you thought of the uh, well first and foremost the, the livery itself because i still think it's a little bit iffy to most with the diagonal on the engine cover and then also the actual just fact of it looks like a merc what do you make of it do you, do you uh, you know what do you make of the kind of customer kind of team way to go about it obviously racing point don't say there are proper, proper customer team are, like, buying as many uh, parts as they can from Merck. I, I think Haas are the only team that really do that a lot, along with Toro Rosso, maybe with the, with the rear end being the same as the Red Bull. Racing Point have always kind of prided themselves on making a lot of their independence. And they've also actually been one of the, one of the teams that's always vocal about being negative on the way Haas operates an F1 team. So it's kind of ironic that they've copied Merck. So let me know what you guys think of that. And uh, yeah, till the next video, which will probably be very, very soon, actually in a few hours later on on the Alfa Romeo or Renault. So till then, guys, hope you enjoy the rest of the day. I'll see you guys then. Goodbye.